I uh, sincerely thank you all for uh, having uh, given your time to listen to this presentation. Uh, since this presentation is long, let me just get on to this uh, topic without wasting much time. 200 odd years of research on pancreas uh, had failed to isolate the internal secretion. The story of how insulin was discovered by these four men is well known. All of us know at least a simple storyline that an orthopedic surgeon named Banting uh, had an idea when he was preparing for a class. Uh, suddenly he woke up at 2 a.m. and uh, uh, with an idea he approached the professor and then he directed him to uh, Professor MacLeod of University of Toronto who initially was not very keen to entertain him. Then he allotted a uh, dilapidated lab and uh, uh, an uh, uh, assistant to assist him. And then both of them worked hard, discovered insulin. Uh, by the time they started the work, the professor went for a holiday and then returned. And uh, when the insulin uh, discovery was well known to the world, uh, Banting was uh, uh, in uh, 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 bad modes because Professor MacLeod was cornering all glory and then they quarreled all that story uh, line we know. This is the usual narrative. So the idea of today's presentation is to uh, get into this little further to uh, know about the human uh, angles, how distinguished scientists with far superior credentials and expertise than Banting failed to isolate the internal secretion before. Was Banting a genius or is it because he happened to be in the right place at the right point of time? How important uh, was a co contribution of uh, MacLeod, Best and Colip uh, in finally arriving at the insulin secretion. And what I propose to do today is to focus only on the actual discovery of insulin, which took almost nine months, May 1921 to January 1922. To get things in the right perspective, I shall touch upon little personal information about Banting, which happened before he knocked the doors of Professor MacLeod. This presentation is long. I apologize for that. And it is a story. I didn't want to break this into two presentations. As it's a pictorial journey, I hope all of you will uh, listen to it till the end. We shall cover the life stories of these posts prior to the discovery as well as their post discovery models. In, the in 1920, Canada was emerging from man made and natural disasters. Four years of World War uh, had just ended, uh, which ended on November 11th, 1918. There was enormous suffering caused by the global influenza pandemic of uh, 1918 to 19. We all know how we are suffering now with this uh, uh, COVID pandemic. Similar influenza pandemic was just getting over around the time. And there was a significant labor unrest, uh, which led to Winnipeg general strike, which uh, again uh, uh, was a problem for Canada. At this time, any diagnosis of diabetes was essentially a death sentence, not only in Canada, anywhere in the world, because there was no cure available. And this is the Banting siblings photograph. Uh, you can see uh, uh, the young Banting uh, among his uh, siblings. He was the youngest of the five children of the family. Uh, he uh, was born in an Alliston farm in Canada. His father was a farmer and all the other siblings, as they grew up, they uh, went on their own, started their own farms. So when uh, Banting was uh, spending his childhood in his farm, he was a loner. He was very much attached to his mother and all the siblings were not with him when he grew up. So he was also attached to animals, which is important to note here because he was brought up in a farm among animals. Then he uh, joined uh, uh, medicine with a lot of difficulty because he had a uh, lot of difficulties in uh, uh, clearing his uh, English examination in this matriculation uh, examination. So twice he failed in his English. Uh, then finally he passed out. Then he chose uh, to go into uh, medicine. And this was his uh, uh, medicine class of 1917. When he was entering his final year, World War I erupted. And naturally, Canadian government wanted a lot of doctors to work in the war front. 
So this final year uh, uh, course was curtailed into two, three months course. And finally, some years later, granting remark that I had only three pages of notes for my final year. Entire final year, I had only three pages of notes. Then he passed. Uh, this is Bantu sitting in the front row, uh, with his uh, fellow students. And uh, then after finishing the uh, course, he uh, tried to join the army. Initially, he was rejected because his eyesight was rather poor with the glass. Then uh, second, on second attempt, he got selected and he was posted in France in the Canadian Army as a medical officer. There, War of Cambrai, it was the toughest war uh, in the uh, war front in the World War I, where uh, huge artilleries were used for the first time. So Banting was very courageous. He, uh, he moved in the war front, uh, so, uh, lot, treated a lot of soldiers, saved them. So he was a savior for many of the soldiers. Uh, Banting actually uh, had a wound in his arm. When uh, uh, during the war, he uh, suffered a wound. And initially, the surgeon in the uh, uh, army camp, they decided to amputate the arm. Then, on second thoughts, the surgeon uh, thought, OK, we will shift Banting to UK, London, and try to save his arm. So he was lifted to London, and there he spent uh, around nine weeks in the hospital, uh, uh, catering to his wound, and then finally he got cured. His war wound was treated in the and after nine weeks he was discharged on 4th uh, December 1918. He spent his sick leave in Edinburgh. Doctors were very hospitable to the wounded medical group from Canada. So uh, there uh, they were very uh, kind uh, and they hosted no? planting uh, in their homes. He was invited to Christmas dinner at the home of AHF Barber, who was a very famous gynecologist. His book was uh, uh, the uh, book which was followed uh, all over the world around that time for uh, undergraduate um, gynecology teaching. So this is his book, Gynecological Diagnosis and Pathology. And Barber, uh, while writing this book, had a co-author, was Watson. Watson was uh, uh, practicing in Toronto, University of Toronto. So Banting's uh, former professor, uh, gynecology professor was Watson. Both of them wrote this book together. And it was a great honor for uh, Banting to get hosted by uh, Dr. Bauer. Then he reached uh, Toronto back after the end of the war. He tried uh, to get into the surgery department. He joined as a senior registrar, house surgeon, senior house surgeon uh, in the surgery department. meeting on Both under Dr. Starr, who is a head of the department of surgery. Uh, Star was also his uh, chief when he was working uh, in France uh, in the medical corps. So Star was a very famous uh, surgeon and uh, uh, Dr. Banting wanted to specialize under him. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't get a placement in University of Toronto. He was refused a faculty position, so he couldn't get into his own university despite his war credentials. Then he decided to move to London, which is 110 miles uh, southwest of Toronto. So the reason why he chose London instead of starting a practice in Toronto, uh, there were two reasons. One was uh, his girlfriend. From 1911, he fell in love with uh, uh, Edith Roach. You can see her in this photograph. On the left, you can see Banting. Uh, so Edith Roach uh, was a daughter of a, a Methodist minister, and she was a brilliant student. Unlike Banting, she scored everywhere and uh, she was a gold medalist in her uh, language classes. And she worked as a teacher in a place called uh, Ingersoll, Ingersoll near London. So naturally, uh, since Edith was working there, Banting was attracted to go somewhere close to her and start a practice. That was one reason. The second reason was one of his close friends, Dr. William Tew who studied medicine with him, had already started an obstetrics clinic in London, the same place. So since his close friend also was practicing there, so he thought he should start a practice there in London. And uh, Dr. Tew's uh, son, who later became uh, an obstetrics professor in University of Ontario, 
uh, who was also uh, very much attached to banting as a kid. So uh, uh, this man actually later on, uh, he was instrumental in converting Banting's house into a museum. So if you go to London near Toronto, you can still visit Dr. Banting's house as a, a museum today, converted into a museum today. On July 1st, uh, 1920, Banting opened an office. Actually, he bought a house. Uh, his father loaned him about $2,500 and he uh, received another $5,000 from mortgage. So it, it's worth $7,500, huge debt. With this, he bought his house. But he was always a kind man. The owner of the house while selling was building another house, uh, but that house was not ready. So he allowed the entire family to stay for months in the same house. And he just took the front portion, front room and, the, uh, and a single bedroom for his use. So for many months, he used that uh, front room as his clinic. Uh, this was his uh, name board. Uh, you can see Banting MD. And uh, this is the room where he practiced. You can see a couch on the left and his work table on the right. But he had to wait for almost uh, 28 days to get a patient. So uh, in the meantime, when he was waiting for the first patient to arrive, uh, he bought a car for himself. Somebody told him that it is a second-hand car and he paid a huge amount for it but it turned out to be a fifth hand car. So he was duped into buying a fifth hand car, which failed to get going even for a mile. And he spent a lot of time in building a garage. So he, he just uh, built uh, a garage for this car, which is useless anyway. And while uh, he was spending time like this without seeing any patient, he just uh, uh, roamed around the streets of London where he got attracted to a picture shop. So. Uh, he bought some pictures, uh, printed pictures there and bought some watercolors and then took it back home, started painting. That's how his interest in painting started. And uh, later on, his paintings were uh, very famous. And uh, he was so poor around that time without any money. He cooked his meals on the burns and burner in his uh, clinic. So this was one of his painting uh, uh, captioned the lab 1925. It was uh, painted in 1925 after the discovery of insulin. So uh, in 2018, it was sold for $313,000 because obviously the worth of this painting uh, is huge today mm -hmm. as it's painted by a Nobel laureate. And the first customer arrived on uh, 29th uh, July, that is 28 days after his uh, inauguration of his clinic. We are calling this person as a customer, not the patient, because he uh, came and consulted Banting not for his illness, but to get a prescription for alcohol. Because just the world war ended, alcohol was in scarcity. To get alcohol, you, needed a, you need uh, a doctor's prescription around that time. So uh, Banting gave a prescription for alcohol to this uh, pay customer and received two rupee as a uh, fee. And in the total uh, month of July, his income was four. Mm -hmm. Then obviously he had to do something else to get uh, income. So he approached University of Western Ontario, which was very close uh, to his uh, house uh, in the same place, London. So it, it's simply called as Western University. So he approached the university and the university, uh, looking at his credentials of a surgeon, they offered him a, a part-time tutor job in the anatomy surgery department. So he had to work in both anatomy and surgery department, and he has to take lectures to students. That was his job. And he was paid uh, $2 every hour he worked there because it's only a part-time job. There he met Professor Frederick R. Miller, who was a professor of physiology. So obviously uh, he was not attached to the physiology department, but he just got introduced himself to Miller and volunteered to help in his research. Uh, he spent hours with Miller during uh, doing neurological experiments with cats. Again, uh, his, uh, uh, um, his uh, encounter with animals started here, here in this lab, not in University of Toronto. So he was already experimenting with cats with Professor Miller. And this is the anatomy dissection hall of uh, uh, Western University. And you can see the old building there. Banting was assigned a teaching topic on the pancreas to be taken on Monday 1st, November uh, 1920. 
so uh, two three days uh, time was remaining for him he went to the library and took some journals few books and went back home and on sunday night he opened one of the journals uh, surgery gynecology and obstetrics november 1920 edition that was the latest edition around the time so he just uh, started browsing and found a topic quite interesting because it was about pancreas the relation of islets of langerhans to diabetes with special reference to cases of pancreatic lithiasis it was written by moses baron who was an american pathologist so during autopsy he found that uh, in a particular uh, body there was a huge uh, calculi big calculus obstructing the main pancreatic duct and what he observed that uh, beyond the obstruction the pancreatic uh, tail and body got atrophied in that picture you can see the atrophied tail and the body and uh, normal uh, the remaining portion of the body and head uh, remaining normal and on the lower panel you can see the huge calculus and uh, uh, he read through this article what he found was like uh, even though the pancreas got atrophied but the langerhans cells the islets the islets were uh, almost uh, uh, safe uh, without any uh, showing any degeneration so prominent islets were noted by baron with complete absence of asini and uh, uh, this uh, created some uh, interest in banting spine he went to bed and it was said that uh, he tossed in his bed he couldn't sleep he was just rolling over and at 2 am he just woke up uh, sat up and took a notebook and uh, wrote an idea which came into his mind and what he wrote, this was a note made by banting in the middle of the night it reads diabetes uh, ligate pancreatic ducts of dog keep dogs alive till asini degenerate leaving islets try to isolate the internal secretion of these to relieve glycosuria you can see two spelling mistakes there uh, i already told you that he was very poor in english and he failed twice in his uh, english composition exam during his matriculation so uh, he was a poor speller all his life but that doesn't mean that uh, he was a poor student he he was a hard worker that was a, a differentiating fa factor between him and the previous researchers so with this idea he approached professor miller the professor of physiology the next day morning Prof. Miller said, "I only experiment with cats, and I don't have any uh, extra lab space for you to work on this idea. So you have to probably meet Prof. Macleod, who has uh, joined the uh, University of Toronto recently. He has come from a U.S. university. He is an authority on uh, carbohydrate metabolism. Try to meet him one day. That was his advice. A yeah, very valid advice. And uh, um, before moving on." we'll just see uh, for uh, banting's uh, credentials uh, before he knocked uh, macleod's room so uh, uh, when bank banting met macleod to uh, he banting banting was 28 year old with very average grades throughout his education he worked as a surgical resident under uh, clarence yell star a very famous brilliant chief surgeon at the hospital for sick children in toronto he had particular interest in orthopedics in every every uh, paper it's mentioned that he was an orthopedic surgeon it is not the case actually he was a general surgeon but with a special interest in orthopedics even in london when he is practiced he was doing lot of tendon repairs uh, 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 bone surgeries and all because his interest was in orthopedics and mostly trained in general surgery he was in huge debt with miserable practice and was deeply troubled by a strained love affair Uh, his knowledge of the pancreas was limited to a single paper by moses baron i am uh, telling you that he had a strained love affair because after he reached uh, london and started practicing he met edith and edith used to come to his home quite frequently but my banting was a changed man after uh, his experience in the world war actually uh, he uh, started getting temper tantrums whenever he felt depressed he used to throw temper tantrums and uh, uh he uh, sort of uh, addicted little bit to alcohol also which was very much unacceptable for edith edith tried to correct him but in vain so uh it so happened that the surgeon star's daughter's wedding happened on uh, 7th november a sunday 
so naturally uh, being uh, his assistant for long uh, banting went there attended this wedding where he told star about the idea star immediately discouraged him but he said okay you can meet uh, macleod but uh, i don't think uh, it's a good idea that was his uh, response and next day morning monday as soon as the university of toronto opened its uh, 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 office he went and met macleod in the physiology department it was uh, a meeting which uh, banting wants to forget later in his life actually banting went inside started talking about the issue immediately macleod retorted that uh, 30 years people have tried so many researchers have tried to do the same but they failed what are you are going to do and then he started reading the letters in his uh, table so banting was sitting in front uh, macleod just stuttered few words and uh, uh, just focused his concentration elsewhere uh, this was very demeaning for banting banting uh, got out of the room and then uh, went back to london john james record macleod it's better to uh, look at his credentials why he reacted that way to banting he passed the medical degree with honors and appointed as professor of physiology at western reserve university cleveland in 1903 at the young age of 27 years in 1918 university of toronto invited him to head the physiology department because they wanted to grow his main interest was carbohydrate metabolism already he had 37 papers on carbohydrate metabolism alone published and 12 papers on experimental glycosuria and had authored 11 books he had six honorary doctorates was a member of royal society of london and he had fellowships from two royal colleges he was the president of american physiological society between 1921 and 23 and at 42 years of age he had 18 years of research experience and was an authority on carbohydrate metabolism on the right you can see the book written by uh, banting on uh, carbohydrate research in 2013 so 7 years uh, uh, before banting could meet macleod so he was an authority and uh, within few minutes after meeting banting uh, macleod decided th this is not a, a viable idea Uh, then again uh, banting in the meantime twice went there uh, met uh, uh, macleod and uh, talked about the uh, idea and macleod spent little more time every time so slowly he was coming around in february 1921 his mentor again clarence star cautioned him on the risk of giving everything up uh, he discouraged banting banting's practice in the meantime became profitable actually he started earning around 400 dollars to 500 dollars every month because he was doing orthopedic procedures and uh, sadly for him uh, around the uh, around the same time edith broke off uh, their engagement and returned the ring uh, given by banting so that was uh, a very depressing moment for banting so this is edith roach uh, his lady love and uh, then uh, on march 8th he wrote a letter to macleod again expressing interest to come to toronto to do pancreas research then about the middle of march after writing this letter again he was depressed panting decided to stake his future on the toss of a coin he decided if it is heads i will do research in university of toronto if it is tails i will go for an arctic expedition for oil because he heard from somebody that there was going to be a huge arctic expedition for oil and uh, uh, they are going to employ a doctor who will be stationed in that arctic area so he wanted to uh, become that uh, uh, exploration uh, company's doctor so he wanted to uh, get an appointment there so he just tossed the coin and he tossed the coin five times uh, three tosses came up tails so the arctic one so this was the area where the arctic expedition was going to happen but unfortunately some days later banting received a letter from the oil company informing him that they had decided not to take a doctor with their expedition so again there was a failure so you can see uh, the university of toronto uh, failed him to appoint uh, by uh, giving him an appointment and uh, uh, in practice he was not doing well edith broke uh, her um, uh, their engagement and then this company refused uh, again uh, to take him for the expedition so around this time 
he repeatedly spoke to dr star cl star stage up probably he, he was one of the top most surgeons who worked in the military came back to university of toronto was one of the senior most uh, doctors there in university of toronto at that time so star stage up might have influenced maclear so banting even considered join the british indian army service and asked for particulars from cl star so this alarmed star why this uh, boy is going to india instead of being in canada looking after his practice so he got alarmed and spoke to macleod about banting's proposal in early march same time when uh, Ma, uh, banting also wrote a letter to uh, macleod so macleod suggested that banting should wait until summer so that the exams are over he said exams are going on uh, nobody will be there to assist him so let the uh, academic year come come to a close then we will consider cl star advised banting to stick with his london practice for the time being so on 11th march finally uh, macleod rel relented the same month macleod invited banting to toronto this was the letter uh, written by macleod to uh, banting and in that he mentions dear banting i will be glad to have you come up here on may 15th as you suggest to see what you can do with the problem of uh, pancreatic diabetes which we spoke about so this was his proposal madings proposal so he wanted to ligate the uh, pancreatic duct of the dogs some dogs so that uh, uh, slowly the exocrine portion will, will withdraw and then 6 uh, 7 weeks later they can open up the dog uh, take the pancreas out and uh, get the islets and take the extract from those islets this was his idea and it was a two stage pancreatectomy because if you uh, for the dogs who uh, need to get the extract you have to create diabetes for them so first first step is to ligate the dog get the extract this will take about 6 to 7 weeks time uh, for the exocrine uh, portion to be withered off whereas if you make the dog uh, diabetic by removing uh, the pancreas totally within a day or two the dog will die because of diabetes so they have to do a two stage pancreatectomy where uh, the pan banting will remove the majority of the pancreas and leave a small remnant around the skin he will pull the remnant onto the skin and suture it and once the extracts are ready he will uh, just remove the remaining remnant make the dog into a diabetic dog and then start the experiments this was the idea and in april 1921 again he took the train uh, for toronto uh, on 26th april uh, met macleod finally and went back to london again on 3rd may star uh, again discouraged banting so actually he wrote a letter long letter uh, uh, to banting discouraging him from leaving his practice uh, he writes i am very glad indeed to hear from you it's a great satisfaction to feel that you are succeeding with your hospital and teaching work and i feel sure in time you will do very well in london and next he writes i wonder if you are doing the best thing by undertaking uh, this physiological work here for the summer it will probably mean that you will lose touch with any private work that you have started at all and will be that much more difficult to pick up when you go back in the fall so he says if you come back uh, if you go back to london to start the practice it will be difficult for you it seems to me that you might be wise to consider the advisability of spending the summer in attempting to building up your practice rather than coming to university of toronto so you can't be very clear than that so he was clearly discouraging panting from leaving london to come to toronto that's why i coined uh, the term uh, banting bets his life on the pancreas uh, because he he left everything uh, to pursue his dream now we'll move on to charles herbert best uh, a little uh, about him uh, he was in, in, engaged to margaret cooper in 1920 um, a language student who was studying in university of toronto so um, best was doing ba Uh, physiology and biochemistry at the university of toronto same time hooper also was doing language in the same university so they became friends and then they loved each other finally they got married later on so in the summer vacation before enrolling into ma course he was offered the opportunity to work with banting so he just finished his ba with honors a very brilliant student 
and then Maclear chose him and uh, another of his friend to assist Banting. Uh, what is very impressive about uh, Best is between 1922 to and 1923, soon after the discovery of uh, insulin, with a lot of work going on uh, in research, he completed his MA, he enrolled into medical school to become a doctor, uh, he became a research associate of uh, Banting and Best Chair of Medical Research, and when they started insulin division at Connaught Laboratories, he became the first director of Connaught Laboratories, and he was a liaison officer to Eli Lilly when commercial production started. He was doing so many things at, at the young age. And this is Charles Best and Clark Noble. Uh, both these friends uh, were offered this summer job. MacLear called them and then uh, within themselves, they tossed a coin to see who will assist Banting first. So Best won. It was uh, understood between the two that Best will work with Banting for uh, first month. And once uh, 30 days get over, uh, Noble will replace him for the second month because the idea was to do a two months research in the lab. Um, but then it so happened that uh, Best picked up a lot of things uh, about the experiment that once 30 days got over when Noble came in, it, it was very difficult for Best uh, to leave because Noble had to learn a lot. Uh, to assist Banting. So all of the three decided that it's better for best to continue with Banting for in the interest of research. It is not that Noble did not turn up or uh, Noble was lazy. It's not like that. Uh, so it, it was decided among the three that in the best interest of the research, uh, the same uh, dispensation of best and uh, Banting should continue the research. And this is Margaret Mahan who was a student in University of Toronto. She helped uh, Banting and Best uh, to write their first paper on insulin. She was always there in their laboratory helping whenever she finished her class, language class. Obviously, she came to see uh, Best and uh, she was very friendly to Banting also. So several pages of the original manuscript are in her handwriting. She later on became, became Best's wife in 1924. So this is the original uh, manuscript uh, kept in the University of Toronto uh, Museum. Uh, this is the original cover. You can see original insulin manuscript. So uh, you can see the first four pages of uh, around 24 pages of the manuscript. On the left panel, you can see Banting's handwriting. Both top and bottom panel are Banting's handwriting. Uh, on the right panel, you can see uh, Bess uh, uh, handwriting as well as Margaret's handwriting. So large, largely it was written by Margaret, dictated by Banting and Best. And why this contribution is important? Because he was uh, doing all the measurements. Because around that time only, this calorie meter, uh, Leeds calorie meter got introduced. It's very tough to work with. It worked by comparing the colors of two solutions, a standard solution with a known concentration and a sample with unknown concentration. So there was a clear prism which uh, dipped into each solution. It had to be adjusted so that the path lengths of lights through the two solutions are to be adjusted. The instrument then takes the light from the two prisms and arranges uh, to form two halves of illuminated field in the viewing telescope. The operator need to adjust the prisms perfectly to give equal intensities in both the fields, at which point the concentration of the unknown sample can be calculated by following uh, this uh, formula. So it's not an easy job. It was introduced for the first time, Best being a, uh, uh, an intelligent uh, student, he picked up very fast. So his uh, contribution to Banting's experiments were very, very valuable. And this was a medical building where uh, Banting's lab uh, was there on the roof. So we need to remember that he started the experiment in May. It was very hot summer and uh, they were sweating a lot. Uh, the atmosphere was not very comfortable. Then uh, finally, uh, Banting did some uh, work in the you know, Western University as an invigilator for the fourth year UG students. On a Saturday, uh, that was 14th May, he uh, finally bid complete farewell to this uh, uh, college and came back to, to uh, Toronto. On 16th May, that Monday, uh, Best wrote his last exam of his BA class. And then on the next day, Tuesday 17th, MacLeod trained Banting. Because Banting, though he was a surgeon, 
he did not know anything about operating on a dog or anything about pancreas so uh, naturally um, macleod showed him how to uh, identify the pancreas a pancreatic duct and how to ligate the duct everything he taught and he gave a lot of instructions about how to do the experiments this in this picture you can see the uh, pancreas on the right panel so the shape of the pancreas in a dog is little different than humans so um, next day the uh, immediately the next day when they operated uh, the previous days dogs uh, were they died actually they uh, did operation on two dogs uh, both the dogs died the next day but dog number 386 survived the surgery so we need to remember here that they just randomly uh, assign numbers to the dogs there is no uh, fixed rule here so these dogs were randomly assigned some numbers uh, only one dog got a name we'll come to that later uh, and uh, one dog survived and then uh, again the first dog 385 died and 386 387 386 also died 387 operated so a lot of thing, uh, things were going on in the laboratory uh, they were having a lot of mishaps initially and uh, these are the parting instructions not that macleod went on a holiday without doing anything he taught uh, banting about how to do uh, pancreatic duct ligation and then gave him a lot of uh, tips about uh, doing the actual experiments these are the notes from banting's notebook where he has written professor macleod uh, told us to do this 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 so uh, uh, you can see the number uh, numbered uh, uh, instructions and then on 15th uh, june best left for military training there was a short military training compulsory training for about 10 days he left and banting started uh, working alone he operated alone uh, lost a dog from bleeding next day then he found the glass were used by best very filthy then he had a doubt whether this uh, uh, boy was doing the test correctly then he took the solution to the biochemistry building and asked one of the friends there to check uh, counter check best values and confirm that best was at fault so best was not doing a good job because he was not cleaning the vessels properly and uh, best returned at around 11 pm to the lab on 26th sunday then uh, this is uh, what happened uh, banting writes i told him that he would have to show some interest that his work was totally unsatisfactory that he lacked accuracy and i ended up telling him that he must throw down the sink every solution that he had been using wash every bit of glassware and make up new solutions uh, best worked all night in the morning only he left and everything was pick and span this was the only time during the uh, insulin experiment that banting shouted at best so this is the lab of banting and best and uh, in july uh it, they were ready to open the ligated dogs now the ligated dogs got cured so 6 7 weeks got over so now it is the time to ex uh, take extract from the ligated pancreas they just opened the dog found that the pancreas was absolutely normal so the ligation failed and then next day they opened all the seven ligated dogs only two showed degeneration that means uh, five of the dogs on which uh, banting operated the ligation was not done properly and only two showed some degeneration unfortunately all the seven dogs died on friday eighth friday so banting and best took a long weekend off it's mentioned uh, in michael bliss book that they took a long weekend off what long weekend means for them saturday and sunday and then again on monday they started they did a two stage pancreatectomy for dog 10, uh, 410 again another pancreatectomy for uh, dog 406 and now they have two diabetic dogs ready and uh, they have some atrophied pancreas from dog 391 so they uh, took the extract from this uh, 391 dogs atrophied pancreas 4 cc of it was injected into dog 410 so what happened next day 410 died it was disaster so this is one of the dogs sitting on the laboratory table uh, then on monday august 1st 406 the number dog was in coma 
then they have uh, they had uh, some 8 cc of extract they injected the 8 cc cc into the dog the dog stood and walked so a, a comatose dog after getting the extract just stood and walked for some time but then the dog died the same day evening but this uh, uh, recovery of this dog though brief uh, made uh, banting and best convinced that they are on the right track then next day burst urged why not we do whole pancreatectomy why we are wasting time by uh, doing a two stage pancreatectomy then they attempted uh, a whole uh, pancreatectomy for 408 and then 408 received two doses of extract next day with good results this was the first time when they named the uh, extract as ilatim this was doc 408 the first doc to undergo whole pancreatectomy on 3rd august 2021 and it received ilatim on 4th august the next day this picture was taken by uh, best girl girlfriend henry mahan on the roof of the medical building and uh, this uh, chart shows how the uh, doc 408's blood glucose level started lowering with a hourly administration of ilatim so it was successful finally finally they reached some kind of success and then next they started control experiments they injected extract into one dog and injected liver and spleen extract uh, in another dog and just compared so finally dog 408 died and then banting uh, wrote to macleod i have so much to tell you so uh, macleod was uh, uh, in a holiday in scotland he wrote a letter the letter was uh, wrote by actually uh, best dictated by banting um, the letter outlined the results of experiments mentioning particularly the docs 410 and 406 and then um, uh, next day 92 and uh, 409 were depancreatized 92 got the extract while 409 was the control now the uh, experiment Uh, started moving in a very scientific fashion uh, then they uh, removed a whole pancreas uh, then they started wondering why by removing the pancreas uh, from the dog why not we take the extract immediately instead of trying uh, to ligate wait for 6 7 weeks uh, allow the islet to uh, 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 remain and then take an extract instead uh, they just removed the pancreas from the dog the same pancreas was used to remove the extract so that worked again so 92 was still alive uh, this dog 92 received uh, extract on 11th august 1921 and then lived for another 20 days unfortunately on on the 8th or 9th day slowly their stock of extract uh, got over and this dog slowly uh, started getting diabetic coma and banting uh, being a uh, man who was brought up in a farm along with animals was very kind to the animals and uh, when uh, the dog 92 died on 31st august for the first time in his life he cried banting literally cried uh, because this dog died just because they didn't have any extract left he knew if the extract is there this dog will would live then uh, finally macleod's letter arrived because uh, obviously a uh, letter written in scotland postcard takes longer time to reach uh, toronto his letter arrived he wrote a four page letter where he gave lot of instructions he uh, he started the letter saying i am quite impressed with your work and it's moving in the right direction but i'm wondering whether uh, the reduction in the blood glucose what you are measuring might be due to dilution by uh, since you are injecting some say 8 cc 10 cc extract into a very small animal whether by just dilution uh, since a lot of volume is getting in uh, the blood glucose is getting reduced we need to address all these issues and lot of tips uh, he gave in this in this letter then uh, they implemented all those tips uh, best uh, on 7th uh, of september best operated on dog 5 on his Uh, own remember he is a ba uh, biochemistry student not a doctor uh, within few months he has learned the art of uh, operating on a dog and keeping the dog alive such a brilliant man then macleod returned on 21st september so uh, naturally uh, banting went to macleod's room met him and he had four requests to macleod 
he wanted a salary remember he started working uh, on may 15th and this is at the end of september and he was not paid a penny for his work so he wanted a salary and he wanted a separate room to work in and he wanted a helper boy for the dogs to take care of the dogs and he wanted the floors of the lab to be repaired but then macleod was not in a position to sanction any of this because the uh, fund allotted by the university to the physiology department was limited and there were so many phd students doing research all of them required some uh, allotment from the fund so he cannot divert all the fund to the insulin research he refused but the way he refused got irritated uh, got banting very irritated uh, banting told to uh, macleod if these uh, facilities are not provided i may go to another place uh, then macleod told banting as far as you are concerned i am the university of toronto you are not getting any of this then banting uh, went back to the lab told best that i will teach that little yes dash of a b dash because this is a, a zoom meeting uh, this is a very unparliamentary word i cannot uh, utter this uh, uh, so that's i am just telling you this that he is not the university of toronto i will teach that fellow that he is not the university of toronto so this is the uh, point where the first animosity between the professor and um, banting started but then he had help in help in hand so uh, dr velian henderson he was a professor of pharmacology uh, in university of toronto he was uh, a very much disliked professor when he uh, did his ug uh, medicine in university uh, they disliked him very much all the class uh, students but then somehow he <laughs> got friendly with uh, velian henderson during the insulin research and uh, henderson took lot of interest in banting's uh, health and well being so at one point banting mentioned he was a trusted friend and best guide of us all so what uh, henderson did he just appointed uh, banting as a part time lecturer in the pharmacology department even though he has no credentials in teaching pharmacology but he just appointed uh, out of his uh, uh, department's fund he wrote to the university uh, that uh, dr fg banting a graduate of this university who has been doing research since may in the department of physiology be appointed temporary lecturer at 250 dollars per month from october 1st 1921 to june 30th 1922 so he has assured at least one month of salary for uh, banting such a nice man and then banting also applied for a scholarship from the surgery department we all know uh, the hod of surgery uh, dr star also was close to banting so naturally when he applied for a scholarship from the surgery department it was awarded so uh, on october 21st again the extract failed that was a first failure so uh, all the time when they gave extract there was some improvement in dogs this was the first extract which failed they did not the, uh, re- know the reason and then the first presentation in the journal club happened on 14th november 1921 so macleod asked banting and best to present their uh, experiment until what they did on uh, 14th november 1921 and this was his birthday so we all know 14th november uh, is banting's birthday which is celebrated as diabetes day world diabetes day and uh, this was the presentation uh, Ban- you can see uh, uh, the paper written in banting's handwriting and this paper got published as the internal secretion of the pancreas in the journal of laboratory and clinical medicine and this was the original paper which got published this was the first presentation and what is more important about this journal club meeting was there was an important visitor to this uh, journal club even though it's a very obscure journal club meeting uh, in a particular department in the university of toronto not advertised but then uh, levelis barker was an associate professor at the um, uh, john hopkins university baltimore and he was um, uh, a canadian so working in uh, us under professor sir william osler sir william osler was a medicine hod in baltimore so uh, second in line was levelis barker 
both osler and bakker were from canada they are Can they are canadians so naturally bakker was visiting uh, toronto he just happened to uh, uh, visit that uh, journal club meeting so he just attended that meeting out of interest then uh, uh, before uh, moving on bakker and osler they wrote this uh, famous uh, textbook of medicine the principles and practice of medicine a seven volume treatise on medicine so this was the uh, topmost book uh, in the 1920s 30s before harrison and other uh, textbooks of medicine came in so osler's textbook of medicine so bakker was a co-author and uh, macleod next day after the journal club next day macleod suggested longevity experiments he said uh, we will keep giving extracts and try to keep the dogs alive so that we can prove to the world that the extract can prolong the life of people with diabetes then again uh, at 2 am on the next day when banting was sleeping he had another idea why not using the fetal pancreas because since he grew up in farm he knew that uh, when animals get slaughtered if the animal is pregnant the fetal pancreas will be bulky so among all the organs the pancreas will be very bulky and he thought maybe the ilex will be bulky also in that fetal pancreas so let us just uh, go to slaughter house and get some fetal pancreas and see next day they uh, both of them visited william davies company uh, to get nine calf fetuses and they prepared extract from the uh, fetuses and it worked very well and this is an important day uh, 18th november where dog number 33 which was named marjori the only dog which got the name Uh, was depancreatized for longevity experiments so this is a dog 33 also known as marjori and uh, going back to us there was a meeting a southern meeting of uh, southern medical association which happened in hot springs arkansas between november 14th to 17 1921 and uh, in that meeting dr uh, elliot b joslin t joslin was presenting a paper a discussion of the newer methods in the treatment of diabetes so he was one of the presenters there in the meeting that meeting was attended by uh, bakker so the uh, the same man uh, the associate professor uh, from university of uh, uh, john hopkins uh, baltimore he uh, attended this meeting and told joslin about this journal club meeting and he told the, about this uh, pancreatic extract experiment to two people in that meeting one was eliot p joslin the famous uh, diabetologist of uh, the century and the other one was dr close george close uh, the research department director of eli lilly and company he was also visiting that attending that conference and both of these people came to know about this uh, experiment in uh, toronto then joslin became curious and uh, he wrote to macleod about this experiment and macleod immediately wrote a reply to joslin so there is a, a letter written by uh, joslin to pancreas uh, joslin uh, asked macleod about his experiments with pancreatic experts uh, extracts so I'll just read it at the meeting of southern medical association in hot springs from which i have just returned i heard dr barker refer to the experiments which you had conducted with extracts from islets of langerhans can you tell me if you have published any article on this subject naturally if there is a grain of hopefulness in these experiments which i can give to patients or even can say to them that you are working on the subject it would afford much comfort not only to them but to me as well because i see so many pathetic cases then uh, within few days uh, macleod responded by writing a letter he said it's true that we have been doing work on the influence of pancreatic extracts which has yielded most encouraging results dr banting and mr best who have been doing this work ought to report their findings at new haven i may say privately that i believe we have something that may be of real value in the treatment of diabetes so in this letter he mentions that they are going to present their results at new haven uh there's another meeting which is going to conducted be conducted in december so then for the first time on 23rd november 1921 uh banting injected 1. cc of the extract into best arm 
and best injected 1.0 cc of uh, injection into uh, Banting's arm. So there were no reactions. They have mentioned that there are no reaction, but unfortunately they did not measure the sugars. But this was the first human experiment, even though uh, it was not given to treat diabetes, but this was the first injection uh, which they themselves took upon themselves. Uh, a risky proposition, but then they did it. Then the first manuscript of their paper, the internal secretion of the pancreas uh, was sent to journal uh, of laboratory and clinical medicine and was accepted for February 1922 issue. Then on 6th December, they began their longevity experiments and with that Marjorie, and this is a, a record of the dog. And this is a dog, again, uh, the photograph taken on the top of the medical uh, building. Uh, the dog lived for nine weeks after pancreatectomy between 18 November to 17 June. So the longevity experiment was uh, a success. But then uh, the first human experiment failed. Uh, you may be thinking the first human experiment was on Leonard Thompson. It was not the case. Actually, uh, they administered this extract orally to one of Banting's best friends, Joe Kilchrist, who developed type 1 diabetes just two years back. Dr. Joseph Kilchrist, a classmate of uh, Banting, developed type 1 diabetes in 1917. He was the first human to receive the pancreatic extract manufactured by Banting and Best on 20th December 2021. This is about a month before Leonard Thompson received the extract as an injection. But uh, for Gilchrist, they administered the extract orally and it had no beneficial results. This was the uh, first human experiment. And then uh, Colip came in. Colip uh, started working with them. Uh, actually, Colip uh, joined the team at the request of uh, um, Banting. We'll come to that later. Colip uh, found that extract increases the glycogen in the liver. And again, Banting uh, had to deliver a paper at Yale. This is one of the important uh, meeting. The American uh, Physiological Society Conference which happened at Yale University in Taiwan, 30th December 1921. So there were already rumors that the Canadians were on the verge of announcing something big in the American academic circles. The American Physiological Society Conference was conducted around this time. So I, as the agenda for the sixth scientific session included a presentation from the Canadian group, there was a lot of excitement. The most important people in American diabetes research were seated in the front row. Uh, that included, you can see the photographs, Frederick uh, Allen from New York, Elliot P. Jocelyn from Boston, Israel Schleiner, Scott, Anton Carlson, and George Close of Eli Lilly and Company. So all these people were uh, big researchers and they were seated on the front. As MacLeod was a president of the American Physiological Society, he was chairing this important session. So he himself chaired the session, sixth session. Banting was very nervous. He spoke haltingly. Uh, in 1940, later on, he reflected this meeting and said, when they called my name, I almost got paralyzed. My mind went blank and I could not think. I had never spoken to such an august audience before. I did not present it well at all. And MacLeod was, an, was in an unhappy position. He just saw how a highly promising research from his own lab fall flat on its face due to, proper, due to poor presentation of Banting. The luminaries started asking probing questions to the presenter and Banting was at a loss to answer them. The only decent thing MacLeod could do at that moment was to join the discussion himself to save all the embarrassment for the clueless banting. MacLeod had answered the questions beautifully, very authoritatively. He quoted extensively from published literature. He talked about uh, docs 92 and uh, 30, 33. He explained how the extract prolonged their survival, told them that the work was progressing on several fronts and that there will be uh, future reports in the near future. Of course, the most disappointed person with the session was Banting. He felt that professor was trying to steal his work. He could not digest MacLeod using the word we whenever he talked about the experiments. MacLeod said we did this, we uh, did like duct ligation, we uh, did pancreatectomy. All that. When, we used, he, when he used the word we, uh, Banting got disgusted. From that day, uh, Banting hated MacLeod for the rest of his life. 
so that was it they never became friends again and uh, lastly will uh, uh, our uh, uh, james from colip he was an alumnus of university of toronto biochemistry department he did his ba in 1912 ma in 1913 phd in 1960 he was not a medical doctor but he was a biochemist and he did his complete education starting from ba to phd in toronto biochemistry department when he was a phd student in the university of toronto he was invited by university of alberta alberta edmonton to become an assistant professor so uh, while doing phd he became an assistant professor in 1915 he spent every summer holidays uh, to hone his uh, research skills he went to chicago he went to glasgow he went to sheffield spent all those two months every year Uh, working under great people and uh, uh, got uh, a lot of research skills developed at 27 years of age he was an associate professor of biochemistry at the university of alberta he had already published 24 original research papers and he was awarded the rockefeller traveling fellowship in 1921 and he chose to work under professor jj r macleod around that time so that is how he visited university of toronto to work under professor macleod with that fellowship in hand and on january 1922 the first uh, injection uh, was uh, given to lenard thompson uh, before that we'll just uh, see some of the other uh, people important here professor duncan graham was the head of medicine Uh, at the toronto general hospital university of toronto in 1919 he was the first chair of clinical medicine in that university and he was a very tough professor very kind to his patients he uh, his dictum was never harm a patient so he will not do unnecessary things to his patient and uh, that prevented him from accepting banting's proposal that uh, the extract can be tried in a human so uh, around that time a 14 year old boy Leonard Thompson was admitted uh, he was weighing only 27 kg uh, he had type 1 diabetes for one year already and his life expectancy total life expectancy was 1.3 years so that means in another 2 3 months he will die uh, uh, even though uh, he lived uh, after uh, taking the extract insulin extract and lived uh, uh, quite well but then he died of bronchopneumonia in 1933 and when he got admitted this was his uh, notes uh, first notes in the hospital uh, he got admitted with loss of weight and wetting uh, the bed he was around 13 years of age when he got admitted so he started wetting the bed in the night the parents got alarmed and then uh, he was losing weight that's why they brought him to the hospital and he was admitted under dr walter campbell's unit dr Wal- walter campbell was an associate professor under professor dungan graham so he uh, was the first one to start <laughs> diabetes clinic in canada at the toronto <laughs> clinic in 1915 so he was the first to inject <laughs> so this is the first uh, uh, case sheet uh, you can see um, uh, in the case sheet that the house physician's name is dr jeffrey so walter campbell called the father of uh, uh, lenard thompson told him that the only remaining hope lay in trying banting extract he told them that something is going on in the physiology department they claim that it's uh, it will work it has worked in dogs let us try uh, if you are agreeing to uh, uh, this experiment with your son so the father uh, agreed and banting was not actually permitted to examine lenard thompson he was not at all allowed inside the ward because he did not get have any physicians privileges at toronto general hospital he was just a part time uh, tutor in the uh, pharmacology department doing some research in the physiology department so he was not allowed to even get into the ward this was quite frustrating for banting uh, banting and best just gave the extract to jeffrey uh, and they just waited uh, on the staircase how surgeon jeffrey went, went inside the ward and gave lenard thompson the first injection so uh, what happened uh, jeffrey a surgeon injected uh, bandix extract under the supervision of dr walter campbell the unit chief and uh, hod professor duncan graham the injection had very little effect jo- uh, thompson's uh, uh, blood glucose fell from 440 to 320 but ketonuria was uh, continuing and he uh, the comatose stage did not improve then unfortunately there was a press coverage somehow the press got to know 
that some uh, experiment uh, was going on in the physiology department. It was a very premature coverage, which irritated Professor MacLeod a lot. Uh, on the right, you can see Toronto Star on 14th January reporting uh, work on diabetes shows progress against disease. A boy is treated. Whereas in an obscure newspaper, 10th January itself, uh, uh, they published a small uh, news item saying that uh, they are going to try it on a human. Somehow it got leaked to the press. So then uh, on 23rd January, Colips purified extract got injected. So around this time, sorry. Uh, MacLeod uh, uh, assembled a team. He directed the work on physiological actions of insulin. So uh, around this time, the team, entire team included Dr. Banting, Best, Colip, Hebburn, Latchford, Clark, Noble, under MacLeod's direction. So Noble also joined the person who lost the time cost uh, of the toss uh, of the coin. So history was finally made in Toronto. On January 23rd, Colip's extract was successfully administered to Leonard Thompson around 11 a.m. Campbell himself injected, the unit chief himself injected 5 cc into Leonard Thompson's buttock. And around 5 p.m. again, another 20 cc was injected. Leonard Thompson's blood sugar dropped from 520 to 120. So this is his chart showing a good reduction in the blood glucose level. And you can see on the left, uh, the uh, effect of the extract on the urine glucose. And on the top right panel, you can see the effect on the blood glucose. It fell from 520 to 120 and ketonuria. So ketonuria completely disappeared the next day. So a very dramatic reduction. Again, in this uh, chart, you can see the yellow shaded area, the total ketone bodies uh, around 23rd, uh, 22nd, 23rd was around 282 milligrams per liter, which fell to 30 milligrams per liter on the next day, 24th. And from the next day onwards, uh, it completely disappeared. So ketonuria completely disappeared in the urine. And when Colip was processing the um, insulin, he, he was uh, working for about a week uh, when Leonard Thompson's uh, first injection failed, when Banting's extract failed, uh, uh, Colip undertook it upon himself to um, uh, purify the extract. It is said uh, uh, that he uh, worked day and night without having a wink of sleep for about seven days and prepared. He tried various permutation and combinations with alcohol and other things, then finally arrived at a, a particular proportion where uh, insulin gets purified. So he wrote it in a piece of paper. Actually, uh, uh, he stayed in Toronto for about eight, nine months, even after the discovery. But then nothing was written by Colep except this single piece, which he wrote and uh, put it in an envelope and uh, gave it to his wife. He left it in possession of his wife in case something should happen to him. Meaning that he, uh, Banting was very much angry with him. So Colip even feared for his life. So uh, later on, uh, 18th September, 1922, some six, seven months later, when uh, uh, MacLeod wrote to Colip to uh, mention about his contribution to the insulin experiments from his angle, he gave uh, this uh, list. He has mentioned about 11 points, 11 steps where uh, without his help, uh, insulin couldn't have been purified. And then the large uh, scale production push started. They entered an agreement with Connaught Laboratories, which was a disused laboratory, uh, which was used uh, to produce uh, vaccines during the World War I, which was in disuse. And Connaught Laboratories was revived to produce insulin. Um, then finally, uh, the uh, longevity experiment entered. Uh, they wanted to do an autopsy on Marjorie on 27th January, 1922 to see whether the extract really worked or uh, there was a remnant of pancreas which was producing insulin, which was contributing to the um, 70 days uh, lifespan of this dog after doing complete pancreatectomy. So Marjorie lived for 70 days after total pancreatectomy. Unlike other dogs, Marjorie's records were very sketchy and MacLeod had doubts about the completeness of pancreatectomy. So they ordered an independent and impartial autopsy uh, which was done by Dr. Robinson, pathologist at the Toronto General Hospital. Then what he found was Marjorie still had 3 mm of pancreatic tissue. 
the autopsy finding even though three we don't know really whether 3 mm of pancreatic tissue could produce so much of insulin to keep the dog alive but this autopsy finding combined with poor records of this dog greatly reduced the value of uh, banting's longevity experiment so banting and best uh, delivered a lecture to the academy of medicine uh, university of toronto on 7th february 1922 uh so this was uh, uh, the agenda for that meeting the effect of pancreatic extracts on sugar and urinary sugar blood sugar on urinary sugar in experimental diabetes so this was later published and you can see in the same meeting noble was uh, doing some other demonstration so he was very much into the team and then uh, uh, this was the final paper describing completely about uh, lenard thompson's recovery so this paper included two other uh, people apart from banting best mcclear fletcher and campbell campbell uh, was a unit chief and fletcher was a treating physician so this paper described the case of lenard thompson in detail it constituted the first official announcement that an extract has been developed which alleviates the symptoms of diabetes in human beings this was the final paper so where um, uh, best collip uh, campbell and fletcher they have signed this is a, a they have autographed autograph paper so this is the final slide for the day how the toronto group solved the 3500 year old uh, puzzle of pancreas it was due to one banting's dogged conviction that he can do it uh, he bet his life on pancreas literally he left everything in london sold his house uh, he was in a pathetic uh, state financially mentally socially but then he uh, had a dog conviction then uh, best support in accurate measurements and he was very supportive throughout the experiments uh, emotionally also then macleod's timely directions and his status we need to remember here that the paper got accepted in new haven then the paper got accepted for a presentation uh, uh, in uh, major meetings Uh, at yale so all that was because of uh, macleod's presence in the team otherwise an obscure uh, surgeon trying to do some experiment uh, i don't think uh, they would have accepted the paper in the first place and then collips expertise in purification this is not the last but the least but very very important contribution for this and finally the collaborative nature of their work everything came together at one point coalesced and they finally succeeded thank you for your patient listening i apologize for the very long uh, presentation but after all it's a story and we need to give uh, credence to those uh, struggles of those um, uh, researchers thank you so much thank you very much sir